All right, another question on sauna heaters. This is for Ard. It says, thinking of buying a Radiant Hell sauna thanks to your reviews. I came across the following regarding heaters. Is this true? Holy crap, Ard, this is long. <laughs> I'm guessing this is a response from someone. You didn't say where or who. Uh, carbon ceramic combo heaters are generally what I recommend. I leave... I led into it or lead into it after I've explained the benefits and drawbacks of the other two options by asking this question. What do you think would happen if you combine carbon and ceramic heaters? As you might guess, since one gets too hot at the surface and the other is too cool, the particular combo creates the most effective type of heater in the industry by mixing carbon and ceramic. You get a more emissive heater that has a surface temperature that won't make the air in your sauna uncomfortable. No infrared sauna is making the air uncomfortable. You also, I just said that, it's not I'm not reading. <laughs> you also get a combination effect that creates the perfect wavelength for penetrating deep into tissue and driving up a body's core temperature, causing you to sweat, giving you amazing health benefits. The emission rating of this material's combination is 0.97, and the heater's temperature is 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which gives us our ideal wavelength when plugged into Wayne's Law of Displacement, displacement Formula. Jesus, is this a sauna engineer or something? I shouldn't be telling you this. Also, sitting near a heater with a surface temperature of 200 degrees Fahrenheit is a heck of a lot more comfortable than being near one that's around 400 degrees. True. But by this point, my opinion on which heater is best is clear. All things being equal, users can get a better sweat with a ceramic heater, get a better sweat with a ceramic heater than with a carbon one, but the incredibly high temperature is just too unpleasant to bear. Carbon heaters, on the other hand, simply don't generate a suitably high and concentrated amount of heat, which gr greatly reduces the potential health benefits, and neither creates the ideal wavelength of infrared. Combination carbon and ceramic heaters, on the other hand, give off the right kind of, the right kind and the right amount of infrared energy at a more tolerable temperature that allows users to stay in the sauna longer. What a mouthful. Uh, this is more comfortable and, of course, allows for more usage, which is crucial when it comes to getting health benefits like detoxification. So, yes, every question and answer session I've done about infrared saunas over the years starts with the same questions. If I've done my job right, it also ends with the same result. A consumer who now completely understands that carbon ceramic infrared heaters are the best choice for his or her body. I don't know who wrote that. I don't know where this came from, but I would say that is a load of shit. Uh... Jeez. <laughs> it, it shouldn't be that complicated. Um, oh, I wrote a response to this. Here's what I said. I said, hi, Ard. Sure, it's true. If you've never tried enough saunas to know that the real world, different, real world difference is so minute, it would never warrant a ridiculous, long-winded explanation like that. <laughs> That's me. That's definitely me. When you find out less than a 10% or when you find out less than 10% of a combination emitter has ceramic dust sprinkled into the mold before the carbon layers are pressed, it kind of makes you wonder if any of these people have used all the products they're selling at all. Actually, this is a, that's the best response ever. That's very succinct. So all I'm saying is the combination heaters that a lot of people were talking about, they're still carbon emitters. So how do you get the ceramic into the carbon? Can you guys answer that? Why don't you send that back to whoever created this? Before the layers are <clears throat> compressed that make a carbon heater, I mean, we're talking about thin. They sprinkle in some ceramic dust in there, right? Think about it. How else would you get ceramic into carbon, carbon sheets? That's it. This is the only way. So when you do that, how much difference can that make? Like, how much dust do you think you can put in between the layers so that this carbon heater has some drastic you know, difference in output than a regular carbon heater. It's going to be minimal at best, and, and I'm being generous. So <laughs> a, a carbon, or I'm sorry, a combination carbon ceramic heater is still a carbon heater with some metallic ceramic dust sprinkled in so that they can say it's a combo heater. My thoughts on that one. Um, Art, I would say that don't waste your time with all this stuff, man. It's they're making it sound super complicated and, and trying to create a selling point out of thin air. Uh, it's really, geez, I've, I've never seen such uh, 
<laughs> it shouldn't be that difficult. It should be really simple. I wouldn't worry about it. I would just get a far infrared. If you want ceramic, get ceramic. If you want carbon, get carbon. There's pros and cons to both. I've got videos on it. I've got videos that talk about the difference, like when you're sitting in it on how it feels. That's the biggest thing you want to pay attention to. They both work. They'll both make you sweat. They'll both make you detox. All this other mumbo jumbo in the middle, just get, get, get rid of it. It's, it's just not worth your time.